here's a pretty typical problem where we have two openings and then light is passing through those openings to reach a wall some distance away. We're going to call that distance L. And the light passing through these slits are coming away at angles, which we'll call theta. And the distance between the points of interference and the central position we'll call x. And the distance between the slits themselves we'll call d. So in the problem statement, we're told that two different lights having a different wavelengths are passing through these slits and creating interference patterns showing fringes at different positions, different patterns. We're looking to find the wavelength of one of these lights. We already have, we're given the wavelength of the other. So because we're given information about the distance between the bright fringes, that means that we're concerned with constructive interference. So recall that the equation for constructive interference says that d, the distance between the slits, multiplied by the sine of theta, is equal to m, the order of the fringes, multiplied by lambda, the wavelength of the light. Now there are a few things to consider here. First, we're not given in the problem theta, so we don't have sine of theta, but we can assume, since we're looking at the fringes near the center of the pattern, we can often assume that theta is small enough that we can use the small angle approximation, which states that the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. So if we want to replace the sine of theta with the tangent of theta, then we can just look at the geometry of our diagram and realize that tangent of theta is going to be equal to, and remember, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent for right triangles, Tangent of theta is equal to x divided by L. So we can replace our constructive interference equation with a d multiplied by x divided by L equals m lambda. Now this is where things might start getting a little bit uh, tricky, at least from a process perspective, where you might have a hard time seeing what to do next. I'll start by pointing out that we are given the x values for both laser pointers. We're told that the x is 5 millimeters apart near the center of the pattern for one of the lasers, then the fringes are 5.14 millimeters apart for the second laser. So I'll start by algebraically rewriting this equation uh, to solve for x. So multiply both sides of the equation by l and divide both sides of the equation by d. And we can see that x is equal to lambda multiplied by L, M, divided by D. And there are two different versions of this X equation that we can have for each of the two lasers. So for X sub 1, I'll call it, the only thing that's changing is the wavelength. So we'll say X sub 1 is equal to lambda sub 1, M, L, divided by D, and X sub 2 is equal to lambda sub 2, M, L, again, divided by D. Let's say that x sub 1 and lambda sub 1 refer to the distance and wavelength that we're given for the first laser they talk about, and we'll say that x sub 2 and lambda sub 2 refer to the distance and wavelength for the second laser mentioned in the problem, where we're only given x sub 2 and lambda sub 2 is what we're trying to find. So we'll, solve, we'll rewrite this equation to solve for lambda sub 2 because that is, our, that is our goal with this problem. So again, doing some algebra, we can see that lambda sub 2 is equal to d divided by l, mul all multiplied by x sub 2. And notice that I've left out the m's, and the reason for that is because the problem says we're looking at the fringes near the center of the pattern, where the m's are at their one value, the first order fringes. So we can ignore the m's because we can assume that they both have a value of just 1. So that simplification helps us a little, but note that the problem does not actually give us values for d or l. And again, this is where things might get a little tricky. But what we can do, however, is notice that in our formula for x sub 1, we have d and l. Remember, those values haven't changed. And everything else in, the pro in that equation is given to us. So we can rewrite that equation to solve 
4d divided by l. And what that tells us is that d over l is equal to lambda sub 1 divided by x sub 1. So in our equation for lambda sub 2, we can replace d over l with lambda sub 1 divided by x sub 1. And now everything in this equation is something that is known. So remember, the wavelength of the first laser is given as 632.8 nanometers divided by x sub 1, which is 5, nanom 5 millimeters, all multiplied by x sub 2, which is given as 5.14 millimeters. We don't need to do a unit conversion because the millimeters cancel out, which is going to give us a value in meters. And so this gives us a wavelength of 650.52 nanometers, or rounded to about 651 nanometers. And that is our answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that will help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best you can. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.